Welcome back to the Shabbos Treasure series. I'm Gila Ross, host of the Power Up podcast, and I'm here together with my co-host, Rabbi Samuel Ross, and we are delighted to be able to share a weekly idea that you can take into your Shabbos and upgrade and beautify immediately. Enjoy. I'm actually going to look at some very practical things tonight, not just because Stephen's hurt his leg and might need a painkiller over Shabbos, and not just because someone caught their finger in a door and might, um, might yet need some painkillers. But we're going to start, we're going to start really looking tonight at medicines in general and how far medicines go. So let me, let me fill you in how we got to medicines and why we're at medicines, and then we'll look at some case studies, some examples. Those of you who were with us two weeks ago might recall that we were learning about, about grinding, teichen, the malacha of teichen, grinding. Um, anybody remembers anything about grinding? So a long time ago, we had Purim in between. It's like, not two weeks, we had Purim in between too. So if you recall grinding, what we learned when we saw grinding was, like when you're pulverizing something, like we looked at salads, remember we looked at how good old Israeli salads? And how to make it. When you're having to cut something down into small bits and pulverize it and things like that, <coughs> you know, that so that sort of time we get into, into, into trouble. Again, so we saw maybe how to deal with it. Was it just before the meal? Um, you know, for immediate use, things like that. But we, we saw it's the concept of um, cutting things down. Okay, so this is where we start tonight. Guess how they used to make medicine in days of old? By hands. Aha! And guess what they used to do? Guess what it was made out of in days of old? Herbs. Herbs and maybe vegetables. And they used to prepare it by grinding or pulverizing the herbs. That's how they used to make medicine, at least in the days of the Talmud. How effective it was, I can't tell you. Um, they, even if they were alive to tell the tale, they're not anymore. But that was how they used to make it. Therefore, therefore, we're going to see medicines in a minute and see how far it goes. But just like we saw last time we learned that grinding of vegetables and grinding of pretty much anything, or most things, is a problem. <coughs> but the worry was that they were going to end up grinding our herbs to make medicine on Shabbos. Therefore, the rabbi said no medicine. Medicine is out. So it's true that today, you know, I don't know how many of you make medicine of a grinding your herbs. If you no. do, I really, you know what? I'm going to make a comment, but the truth is probably that's how many types of medicine today actually probably do work. Let, let, let's, let's actually not go that way. Um, but the point is, is that whether you do make your medicine like that or whether you just get it from the pharmacy is somewhat irrelevant. Medicine is out. Like, and I think we started discussing this two weeks ago. Again, we'll see the exceptions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, over the next few minutes. But even to take a painkiller, you know, all things being equal, um, again, we'll see the exceptions. But in theory, that's out. To take a lotion, it's out. Any sort of medicine that you can think of is gone. It's out. Okay, that's that's the big broad statement. Um, we're going to have to see the exceptions because obviously, again, we're not going to go as far as the guy who's, you know, um, not, not, I'm not speaking, speaking about someone who's caught their hand in the door, but someone, you know, God forbid, who's actually dying, of course you give them medicine and, and, and everything in between. There's going to be lots of different exceptions to the rule, but the point is that in theory, medicine is gone. And just to show you how far medicine is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how far medicine goes. Exercise for this purpose would be included under medicine. What? How can exercise be included under medicine? Guys, what's exercise going to do with medicine? It's all bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I remember in days of old, many years ago, I used to get like injured from playing, playing soccer, playing football. People used to say, hey, you claim it's a healthy sport. So, okay, I, I, I get that. I get, I, get, I get the point. Of course, Stephen's got injured that way. But the point is that exercise improves one's fitness. So yes, it's true that a few weeks ago, we actually saw that maybe you shouldn't run or do exercise for a different reason. Maybe it's one of the things that you should, be, uh, you should act differently on Shabbos with. 
But the point is that when we speak about um, medicine being forbidden because it was a rabbinic decree of grinding, even things as far as removed as you would think from medicine like exercise, because it improves your fitness, are included. So that is the principle. Again, we're going to get into exceptions, when yes, when no, how to deal with it. That we're going to do now. But you're all clear with the principle, right? You might never have heard of this, but in theory, medicine is all out. When you, when you say it's all out, what do you mean taking you it? You can't take any medicine. On Shabbos? On Shabbos. It's gone. It's not allowed because it rem the rabbis in days of old were worried that you were going to get your herbs and grind it up and make medicine. Therefore, even though today we don't necessarily make medicine that way, anything that is classed as medicine is no good. Can't do it on Shabbos. Okay, Darren, wait 10 minutes. We'll see times you can take it. We'll see exceptions to the rule. But, it, but the concept is medicine no good because, because in the days of old, Grinding. They, they used to grind up the herbs. Okay. I think now, now that we've seen the concept of medicine and why medicine is no good, I think um, we should start seeing which types of medicines are forbidden and which types of medicine are okay. So, Gila, maybe you want to lead us off about progressive therapy. Doesn't that sound posh? It does. What does it mean? What does progressive? it even mean? Does anyone know what progressive therapy is? No. Nope. Neither do I. Okay. So, do you want to explain to us what progressive therapy is? So, basically, it's any sort of corrective or health-enhancing therapy, Okay. So I'll give you a few examples. For example, if you're going to take some, some pills, use of ointments, acupuncture, etc. When, when will the person use progressive therapy, Sam? That's, that's a good question. They, they, you know, they want, they want to, um, they, they, they want, they want to become better. You know, they're, they're not doing so well in whatever regard it is. Maybe they need a aspirin or maybe they need an ointment. Maybe they need acupuncture, their back's hurting. What about antibiotics with that? Oh, so a great question. The antibiotics we're going to see later. That's a great question. We'll see why antibiotics is an exception to the rule. Great question. But anything which is going to make you feel better is not okay. Um, again, we saw before, exercise is not okay. Um, so and is this for someone who's healthy as well or just for someone who's question. not well? Excellent question. So this Even for someone that's healthy. Even for someone that's healthy, you can't take painkillers, you can't take medicines. What about... Going doing some exercise at going to the gym. Can you do that? No good. But hey guys, you can also ask questions. But that's the first rule. Anything that's gonna make you're not feeling good, God forbid, you need to become better. Well, even if you're if you are feeling good, <laughs> even fine, if you are feeling you okay, want, want to medicine, your health, no you good. would not be able to do it. Okay, so the next thing is that vit vitamins. I think someone asked this two weeks ago. I think maybe many yeah. vitamin, it depends why you take some. So if you're oh. taking it. Um, let's say, to improve your physical state. It's no good. It's the same idea. The only time the vitamins are okay is if you're physically okay, but you just want to like maintain your health. Like, for example, you want to prevent a relapse or something like that. <coughs> but, but again, you can't take things which are, if someone's weak or whatever it is, and someone is trying to improve their physical state. Vitamins, vitamins, vitamins will only be okay if you're trying to maintain your health. Again, something which so is... for like immunity. So say like my kids take vitamins daily for their immunity. They couldn't take them on Shabbos. Again, without getting into the laws of children and so on and so forth, the challenge the challenge is oh, once are they not maintaining oneself? Would that not come on to that? Once, even if it's maintaining it, once it's also there to improve the general health, it's it's not okay. So it depends. It, it's somewhat probably somewhat depends on the person. If, uh, if, if someone is generally very healthy and they don't need to improve their general health, it's going to be okay. If someone is weak, it's going to be an issue. By the end of tonight's session, we will see how you can take almost any medicine and how to get around it. We, we, we will see. Um, this time of year, it's also probably not very hard because like this time of year, you could always take whatever medicine you need at 7.30 p.m. Yeah. It's... Just before showers, then just after showers. Um, it doesn't matter what the medicine is, yeah. What about 
if someone is um, um, really ill. Okay, so God forbid someone is really ill, obviously none of these things are going to apply. We're not, when, again, we're not just speaking about matters of life, life and death, God forbid. But even someone, um, if you know who's really ill and they're in bed, um, you know, really, really sick, um, you know, obviously they can take whatever medicines they need. We're discussing someone, so we're discussing right now a minor ailment. <coughs> someone has got like a, you know, that doesn't feel the best or whatever it is, teeny little headache. Uh, so then they're not supposed to take medicine. We're not speaking about, you know, obviously somebody who is, um, you know, in and enough to be in bed. In that enough, yeah. That, 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 that that's their, or that's their way of dealing with it, you know, they would normally go to bed. So um, what's so what's what's if someone had I don't know a really really bad headache, they couldn't go to shul. But if they took a tablet, they would be well enough to go to shul. Are they then saying not to take the tablet so they don't go to shul? So again, look, it's a very good question. We've had this question in different regards. I remember someone asked, "Could I open my sukkah roof on Shabbos on sukkahs when I know that the water will soak the grass?" So it's the same answer that we're not supposed to do a sin in order to do a mitzvah. But it could be that the person, because the headache is so bad, it could be they're allowed to take a tablet anyway. The basic cutoff is, and we'll see this again, we'll see this later, but the basic cutoff is if it's bad enough that the person to deal with it would normally go to bed because it's so bad, then they could anyway take a tablet. So once you're sort of getting into that situation where it's so bad you can't go out, oh, you're going to bed anyway, you're probably allowed to take a tablet anyway. Uh, but if it's really not that bad and the others, they just couldn't go out. So no, they, they, it would be better to stay home. Okay. What happens if, for example, you know that you're going, you, you're going to shul and you are going to make a minion. So you're going to a smaller service. Without you, there won't be a minion, right? You're not well enough because of the headache. Does that mean that still, even though the mitzvah of being the 10th man and making the minion still doesn't allow you to take the tablet? I, I'm not. I'm not sure that's going to make a difference. At the end of the day, you've got to take care of what you need to take care of. And if, if you're not supposed to take it because that's violating Shabbos, okay, take care of you know what what's come to you right now. Um, but again, the person has to evaluate if it's bad enough that they're going to. That normally would be during the week, but you know they would go to bed because that's the way of dealing with it. Without a tablet, they could take one. Um, so we're talking about a very very narrow uh, uh, situation right now. Okay, this is the other thing. This is the other thing. Um, let's say a person has a sore throat, for argument's sake. So in theory, you can't take medicine. But let's say the medicine for that, let's say for argument's sake, was a lemon tea with honey. Let, let's just say, or chicken soup, good old chicken soup. Mm. It would not be a problem to take that because people who are regular, people who don't have ailments, would also take lemon tea with honey or chicken soup. So anything, you know, again, I'll write all these notes, I'll put it on the group afterwards, but anything which in any event you know, any, any regular guy would take. So what about going for a walk? Would that be okay? Absolutely. Great question. Absolutely. That would be absolutely fine. Anything which anybody would regularly do anyway um, wouldn't be a problem. Which will, again, which will then lead us into antibiotics, which is a different thing. You asked us before about antibiotics. I did ask about antibiotics. Why would Tackle, is it, is it, can a quick question? Is it a, an issue if the medicine's a pill? As opposed to if it was a soluble tablet that you put in a liquid and mix it, is it, is it or is it the same principle? No. So once you're on Shabbos, it doesn't make any difference. If it would be before Shabbos, it might be a different answer. But once you're on Shabbos, it doesn't make any difference. It's medicine is medicine. <coughs> on, the on the exercise point, is it right that I, that I've, I can't remember where I read it or whether I heard it, that if you're running late to go to shul, you are allowed to run to shul yes. on Shabbos? Correct. It's even a mitzvah to run, yeah, yeah, under those yeah. circumstances. Um, so again, so so far we've already got two issues with doing exercise. Um, one is, you know, the idea of the, your, your your actions should be different. You know, the idea of running, less less it's a mitzvah. And now we're seeing that, ex that you know real exercise um, that is also is going to be included under potentially under under medicine. Yeah, the only reason I ask that question is you're allowed to run to shul in order not to be late for shul. So, you, so you're doing exercise in order to do a mitzvah, but you're not allowed to take a headache tablet in order to make a minion, which is also to do a mitzvah. So I was just trying to work out the distinction between the two, that was all. Well, and, and, it, and it's, it's, so, so it's a good question, but in any event, the, the, the example that you brought about running to shul um, was, 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 a, was a different thing. It wasn't because, this is because of tochem, because of grinding. That one uh, was, was more because of the idea of, in, in the prophets, it said three things should be different. The way we walk, the way we talk, and so on and so forth. 
But there it said for the sake of a mitzvah, you 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 um you could do that. I'm not sure that you know ru- running for the, uh, you know that the sort of running you're talking about. We're not talking about you know a marathon runner would necessarily include on this. I'm not I'm not convinced. Um, you know a, a few you know ha- ha- you know half just from your house. I I don't know, but um um but that that that's that's a situation. You know just just to get to shore for the sake of mitzvah is okay. But uh, they, they don't want you to start taking medicine, which is a violation, in order to get to shore. But uh, it's, just, it's, it's a fair point. Okay. Antibiotics, Gila, why is antibiotics okay? So you're allowed to take medication um, where, where, where you have a course of medication that has to be taken over, over a certain number of days. And, and it's only effective um, if it's, you know, like antibiotics, you know, let's say they're generally given for seven or 10 or 14 days, and you have to take it for the entire course. Um, so that that would be okay. Okay, so what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to look at some examples. I think we wrote down five, six, seven different examples. And they're not all so easy because um, this is a really complex topic as to when things are okay or not okay. But before we do that, let's quickly run over the principles we saw. And maybe you'll maybe run, you'll run through some of the questions. The principles that we've seen, number one was, um, well, the principle that we've seen is in days of old, they used to grind the herbs. So therefore, they didn't allow you to, for, for medicine, so therefore they didn't allow you to make medicine because they worried you're going to start grinding stuff. We saw that to, in, to, that to make yourself better, you know, things like ingesting pills, ointments, acupuncture is a problem, even exercise. Vitamins okay, are okay if it's, if it's preventative. Preventative is okay, as long as it's not also to make you feel better. Um, minor ailments are included, but severe illnesses were not included. Um, if it's a regular person would you know, would take the hot tea or would go for a walk because it's got tension, so that's all, all fine. Um, we saw that antibiotics is okay because you've taken over a number of days. And finally, we saw that any illness, like a headache that's bad enough that normally you would go to bed, if you combine it to bed, then you can take medicine. Now let's look at a number of examples. We, we, some of these have gone through, some of these we haven't gone through. But just to give you a feel of how far this goes. So, Gilly, you want to give some examples? Sure. Some it's- questions. Detectives, let's go. If someone has a splinter, are you allowed to take it out on Shabbos? No. We say. Okay, so we've got one no. No upstairs in the loft. I would say I would say yes because fundamentally, if you leave it in, potentially potentially it's it, it, it could get significantly worse, and also it could spoil your shabbos, isn't it? And it's something. Uh, but then it, I suppose it also depends if you got the splinter before shabbos and then decided to take it out after shabbos. So in other words, you got your sh- so or to take you got the splinter before shabbos and then took it out during shabbos, then it can't have been that that bad for it to hurt. I don't know. That's but. I suppose, does it depend upon when, when you got the splinter? Uh, so let's say the splinter came on Shabbos. And let's say, let, no, to make it easy, let's say that it's not going to get worse. I'm, I'm just trying to like, get rid of all the variables here. It, it's just an annoying splinter. It's hurting a little bit. Am I allowed to get rid of it? You're gonna no. Be, you're going to be surprised by the answer. Darren doesn't like it. But, you can't take the good from the bad. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, you can. You'll ne- you'll never get the reason. But I think we should tell them because it's considered a removal of an outside affliction, as opposed to a healing. You're taking a- an affliction out, and if you think about the principle of what medication was, you know, then then this is, is you're taking something that that's an external affliction away, as opposed to actually healing. Yeah, I'm, we're just giving you a few examples right, to show one. how extreme this is and how complicated this case is. I also would have thought at the first glance that splinter is surely a problem. But again, it's not even deemed as healing. Okay, next example, Gilda. Can you use talcum powder for perspiring feet? No. Yeah, I'd have said no. Okay. Maddie, you're going to go with no as well? No, I think you can. You're right. You're oh. right. Because who would, who would you want to kill with your smelly feet, especially on Shabbat? Come on. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Stephen. Um, so the reason the reason why you can <laughs> is because it's absorbing the moisture. It's, it's absorbing the troublesome moisture. Moisture. Again, we, we're giving you two examples where things are out of the boundary of what's considered to be medicine, which is why it gets complicated. Exercise is in. 
But you know, but you know, troublesome moisture, get rid of that is okay. Removal of an outside affliction of the splinter is okay. Okay, number three. Can you use a plaster or a band-aid on Shabbos? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would say yes. Yes. Why? Because I was going to say no, and I decided I'm going to say yes on the basis of the. <laughs> Surely this is healing, Baron. Why is it okay? <laughs> well, it's okay. it's protecting something from getting worse, maybe on infection. Excellent. Because again, you're not healing. What you're doing is you're protecting the wound. Excellent. Number four, your love. Number four. What about drinking whiskey to calm nerves? Well, you are allowed to drink whiskey on Shabbos, so I'd say yes. <laughs> Excellent. So that's what we saw earlier, that if everybody else is doing it, if you can think that regular people are doing it, then you can do it. What about the next one? Mm -hmm. Taking a pill when you're worried that you might get a headache. So this is before you actually have a headache, but you're concerned. No, 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 because that's like preventative, isn't it? Which the preventative is, is okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, really? we, said, we said earlier that it's a problem to make yourself better, but before something's happened, you're allowed to. So I, I, I might have solved that Andrew's problem. That if you know you think you think, oh, I'm gonna get, get a headache in a couple of hours, you've got reason to believe it, take that tablet then. It's a pro it, like the vitamins is, is like could even be a problem, you know, once you're past a certain point. Um, you know, if like we skip it, even by some of my vitamins, we saw that it's 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 a problem if it's also gonna make you feel better. But um again, so this is the situation. One final question for now, sleeping pills. Mm. Sleeping pills. It's going to make you better. So it, on the surface, it should have been a problem, but believe it or not, it's okay. Guess why it's okay. Because you're not, you're not healing. You're not healing. You're excellent. Healing. Excellent, Andrew. Fatigue is not regarded as a medical condition. <laughs> Again, I'm, 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 I'm giving these, these extreme examples to show you that this is a really complex question. Who would have thought that on the one hand, like vitamin tablets, if it's there to also make, you know, because you're slightly weak, to make you better is no good. Exercise is out. But yet sleeping tablets, fatigue isn't an issue. And uh, but a plaster, a band-aid isn't an issue because it's protecting the wound. You know, there's a, you, you, like, you have to really, really know these things. I guess what we've really seen is preventative is okay. To make yourself feel better is, uh, if you're feeling ill, is not okay, unless obviously, you know, the really ill. Um, if you're, if it's so bad, you'd like, you'd, you'd have a headache, you'd be in bed, it's a problem. Um, if you know, you, uh, then, the, uh, then you can take. And if somebody would, um, you know, a regular person would take it, you know, something like whiskey or go for a walk or something like that, then, um, then you're gonna be okay. So therefore, does that mean, say for example, knee bandages, if you had a bad knee, wearing a knee bandage on Shabbos isn't, isn't deemed to be carrying because it's preventative, not healing. Um, each case has to look individually. If you want to know specifically about the bandages, let me, let, let, me, uh, let, me, let me look into that one. Each case is individual. I want to ask you one final question for this evening. So let's say, um, and we, 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 you know, especially people who've got kids at home, we all have this, we have this sometimes for ourselves. You know, sometimes I know that I've got a headache or I know I've got antibiotics and I know there are things which are definitely okay for me to do because it's a preventative headache or it's a really terrible headache or it's an antibiotic. But what do I do when I don't feel that I fall under any, any of the categories, but I want to take the medicine? Let's use Maddie's, Maddie's example of, you know, I want my kids to take vitamins or I've got a certain type of, of, of tablet, which eh, I don't know if I have to take it every day, but I want to take it. So how do I deal with that on chance? It doesn't fit into any of these exemptions. Like, for example, I've got a pill that I take every single day, but I don't think I need to take it every day. Like, if I missed a day or two or three, I'd be absolutely fine. I'm not sure that that would count like an antibiotic. Um, so how do I deal with that? So there is one other solution, and this gets you out of the problem, which is it's only a problem if it looks like it's medicines. If you camouflage it, it's not a problem. So let me tell you how you do that. Like the way that someone told it to me many, many years ago was, he says, you get your tablet before Shabbos, you, you, you know, you put peanut butter around it. Or you get, you get a little Lachaim glass and you put some apple juice in it with the tablet before Shabbos. Like Darren was asking before about doing it. You can't do it on Shabbos. But if you do it before Shabbos and you, you know, smear it with peanut butter, you put it in a little Lachaim glass with some apple juice or whatever it is. Once it's camouflaged, then it's never a problem anyway. Almost never a problem in most circumstances. 
So that is a way to always deal with this. Again, let's just very quickly go over what we've seen. Um, the rabbi set up the problem of medicine. Medicine is, is all things being equal, always, always an issue. Um, it's not an issue, you know, obviously if someone is very seriously ill, it's not an issue as a preventative measure. Um, it's not an issue, like antibiotics you're taking, you need, you need to finish the whole uh, series. It's not an issue if it could be excused as behavior of a regular person like chicken soup. Um, it's not going to be an issue if it's so bad you'd have to go to bed to get rid of it. And it's not a problem if you can massage it with peanut butter or whiskey or whatever it is before Shabbos. Okay, we wish you a good Shabbos. See you next week. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback. You can get in touch with me. You can find me on Instagram. It's Gila Ross. And please take a moment to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out. Thank you and have a wonderful day.